Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we're going to be covering some running exercises that are going to help us develop faster acceleration, and then how we can use these exercises to enhance our athletic performance. So these exercises can be used in the classic track and field events to develop acceleration, or they can also be used for, um, for athletes in other sports such as soccer, football, or basketball to enhance your acceleration for performance in other sports. So the first exercise is called a push-up start. Essentially what's going to happen is the athlete will start in this uh, push-up position, so the bottom of a push-up position, and on a go command, or when the athlete's ready, they're going to get up as fast as possible and accelerate as quickly as possible over a short distance. So the reason that they're going to start in this push-up position here is because when they get up, they're automatically in a low position to start with, which is what we want with our acceleration mechanics. We want to start low and drive back. So I'll play the video and then explain. So as we can see here, when the athlete gets up, they already they have their body in this low position, which means they can start driving um, automatically from a good position rather than starting it upright. So as we can see, we're driving low, the head stays down, and the body's leaned forward as we're driving through. And that's the reason we use the push-up position as a start. So the next exercise is called a falling start. And essentially it has the same principles as the previous exercise however the athlete's going to start in an upright position fall forward on both feet and then when they're at about 45 degrees the athlete's going to basically then start running so i'll play the video and then explain so as we can see here when the athlete falls forward if we can pause it at the right time, the athlete is going to basically start in that, start running in that same forward leaning position. Have we have that forward lean head down and we're driving with the, the, um, the hip, knee and ankle are gonna drive backwards. So we can see here a really nice starting acceleration position and really good mechanics. That's why we use the falling start. So the next one here is follows again the same principles, but this is what we call a two-point start. So the athlete's going to start in this two-point position. It's called two-point start because we have two points um, on the ground, which is both feet in this case. So what the athlete's going to do, going to do is start in that forward-leaning position with that front knee bent and most of the weight on this front leg. And then on a go command or when the athlete's ready, they're going to start driving as fast as possible um, while initiating that first step by pushing off this front leg here. So I'll play the video and then explain. So as we can see here, when the athlete pushes with their first step, they're driving forward with that forward lean and that head is down and that forward lean is maintained and gradually risen throughout the rest of the run. So as, as we pause here, we can see that first step, the athletes um, leaning forward, maintaining good positions here, and they're going to slowly drive, uh, sorry, they're going to continue to drive and slowly rise as they run through. So the next one is a three-point start, which is similar to the previous one, but it's a little bit more complex because we have now... Uh, not only both feet on the ground, but we also have one hand on the ground. That's why it's called a three-point start, because now we have three points of contact. So this one's going to be a little bit more difficult than the previous one, but also slightly more effective if, if it can be performed correctly. So what's going to happen is the athlete is going to start um, in their, with one knee on the ground and one foot forward on the line with the opposite hand on the line as well. And then when the athlete's ready, they're going to lift the back knee off the ground, lift their hips up, and then drive. So I'll play the video and then explain.
So as we saw in that video, the athlete starting in a very low position and that first step is initiated again with that front leg. And again, we want the same principles to apply. We want to have a low start and we want the athlete to be leaning forward so that they project themselves horizontally, not only vertically. So if we have a look at this first, this first step, it's initiated here with this front leg while this other knee drives. And then the athlete again maintains that low, that low position, that forward lean head down and continues to drive and then gradually rise up. We can say, see the same thing from this angle. In this starting position, as soon as the athlete lifts that knee off the ground, most of the weight is here on this front, on this front leg and on this front arm, so that as soon as the athlete begins, all the center of mass is already forward. It's forward of the body, so that the athlete can push themselves forward and not just directly up. Big push, big drive, and finish that full extension. Okay, so the last video is going to be a sled pull. And essentially, again, we're looking for the exact same principles, but using a sled is going to allow the athlete to uh, basically increase the resistance, slow down the movement, and overload this part of the run. So the sled is especially good for, uh, for learning acceleration and improving your acceleration, because the sled, what it's going to do is, is it's going to use external load to force you to maintain that forward lean. If you try running with the sled with, um, with an upright position, what's gonna happen is you're not really going to move anywhere. Your legs will start moving, but it's going to pull your torso back. But if we maintain that nice forward leaning position, we can then make sure we're projecting um, our body forward and then pulling the sled obviously forward instead of just project projecting ourselves up. And the sled with that external load gives you that um, awareness of actually being able to project yourself forward. So exactly the same principles apply. The athlete will start in again in a two point stance or even a three point stance if they desire. And the only difference here is that the athlete's not going to be able to rise very much because of the external load. So they're going to main, have to maintain a forward lean even when they reach higher speeds. So I'll play the video. So with the sled pull, um, each step and each ground contact is going to be slower, but you, it teaches the athlete to be patient and make sure they're fully, fully finishing that extension. So if we have a look at this first step here, we can pause at the right time. We see the athlete pushes off that front leg and reaches that full extension with that back leg while the knee's driving up and the um, the head's down and the torso is leaning forward. And then that position is pretty much maintained the entire time. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of it. Um, you can follow Flow High Performance on Facebook and on Instagram if you want to check out these research infographics that we post. Um, these are essentially the latest research summarized into these easy to understand graphics so that you can stay up to date with the latest research in sports performance training without actually having to go into the journals yourselves and read the entire article. Uh, these pictures basically highlight the most important aspects of, um, of that particular research paper and summarize them into a quick and easy to understand um, picture. Thanks for watching guys and hopefully you got something out of it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And you also watch another video here that you might enjoy or check out the latest video um, posted here. Thanks for watching and hopefully got something out of it.